asking, where is Belmar, New Jersey, compared to where I am from? My wife and son are there for a couple of days, which is why I can participate in this tonight. Um, Belmar is uh, about an hour south of where I'm from. I am there frequently. I, uh, I am a regular, a regular in the town of, of Belmar. Beautiful town, lovely beaches, fun nightlife. There probably are, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of muscular uh, 20 and 30 somethings throwing themselves at your wife uh, in your absence right now. I should, uh, should tell you that it is a, a party town. Um, but uh, good, a, a wonderful, incredible place. One of my favorite towns, some great, uh, great restaurants, great beaches, great butt cheeks on the boardwalk. You really can't go wrong with, uh, with a visit to Belmar, New Jersey. Um, so yeah, very good. Good to have you with us. It is, uh, yeah, it is a uh, a rough weather weekend here uh, in New Jersey this weekend. But they're they're not far away from Point Pleasant, which has the boardwalk and all of uh, all that good shit. So they can go. There's there's still fun to be had. You can have you can have a good time at the Jersey Shore, rain or shine. I say. Anyway, um, I am I am very excited about sharing this story with you. Um, This is, I don't know that there's a way to explain this story other than to just jump into it. And I, I don't even know if I have the time to give you its full context, but we will, we will go through as much of this, uh, as I have the energy for, because there is so fucking much here. Um, it starts with this tweet from this Twitter user uh, at Kelsey, uh, aka Post Rut Clarity. Tweets: I am so fucking angry right now. Stop finding women you see on dating apps on their personal social media profiles, especially if you haven't connected and there are zero identifiers in their profiles. I got these and let my curiosity get the better of me. Videos in replies. Okay, so um, this chick gets uh, gets these DMs from this guy who found, who saw her Bumble profile and then stalked her online and eventually found uh, found her Facebook profile, and he uh, he fucking uh, what you call it started DMing her. Uh, unfortunately, this is. Very difficult for me to uh, to see. For this is fucking small. Uh, he's well. The good th- the good thing is we won't have to read through too many of his messages because he left a lot of voice messages. But um, I'll read a couple a couple choice lines from this one. He he writes, Kelsey, and then he writes, I mean, uh, K shit. Mayhaps that was a tad overly enthusiastic for a stranger danger message on a sunny Friday morning. My bad. Let's go with, uh, I can explain. Fuck yeah, that works. Uh, he made, he used like, you know, dashes and parentheses to make a, uh, one of, one of these, the shrugging shoulder guy. And her response was, Sorry, do I know you? Which is probably an appropriate response. He says, no, we don't know each other. Sincere apologies for the subterfuge. And just He is just so fucking hateable. If you give me the tiniest bit of room, I'd be happy to explain. I reckon that said explanation will bring laughs and smiles. P.S., not trying to rope you into a period a pyramid scheme to sell fancy Tupperware. Dot dot dot. Yet, yeah, he's a jokester. Is is what's going? He's not a look. Don't worry. I'm not trying to rope you into a pyramid scheme to sell fancy Tupperware. Yet, oh, <laughs> um, to which she. By the way, 
She's giving one sentence replies. She says, explain away. And then he says, oh God, I just spent 60 minutes singing to seniors with a mask on and in a hot room. Not sure if I'm funny right now. That took a lot of energy. Okay, fuck it. I can do this. Um... Then, okay, here, here, here start the voice notes. He sends her a series of voice notes explaining who he is and, and what has happened. Hey, Kelsey, how's it going? Don't mind me. I fucking hate texting. I think we're all better without it. So I usually use one of these when I can. Um, also, I don't know if you've ever seen that key and peel skit, but that's how I feel about texting. I could go on anyway. Um, I just want you to know right off the bat, I fully accept how fucking weird this is. I'm sorry. I hate the way he chuckles to himself. Like he, like he was talking and he can't contain himself because this is very, this is goofy and silly to him. Sorry, but like I said, I think if you give me a second, you'll probably end up laughing and, uh, not that you need my permission, but feel free to just laugh directly at me for being a fucking idiot for I am surely about to embarrass myself right now. I would also. I also I hate his, his podcast voice. It sounds like he's broadcasting. It sounds like it, it sounds like this guy really wants to be like a, a, a fucking a true crime podcaster or something like that. This I would not be shocked if this guy spends a lot of time while he's shitting watching. uh podcast clips on like tiktok tiktok and uh and instagram like any any show where there's just like fucking you know four four millennial assholes sitting around a table with headphones on and fucking mics and they're talking about relationships or fucking whatever the fuck this guy probably eats up make the argument that embarrassing myself on a microphone is a large part of my job and i'm quite good at it so uh here goes nothing <laughs> and sorry for the delay i was gonna get back to you but i just someone called about a gig tomorrow and i'm trying to help him find a musician also i'm not sure if i'm fucking funny anymore i just spent 60 minutes like i said uh playing guitar and singing to a room full of senior citizens but the room was stuffy and hot i had to do it with the surgical mask on and also even if this wasn't weird as fuck, he's just exhausting to listen to. Just completely fucking exhausting. I'm not sure if I have any funny or social energy left, but I am going to try. I'm going to try and fake it right now. So thank you for your understanding and patience. And uh, here goes nothing. I'm a fucking idiot. Enjoy. So, I was minding my own business last week on Ye Old Bumble, everyone's favorite online dating app. Punch me in the fuck. This, this is every message he talks like this. Like he's doing, like I feel like he's doing a Blue Chew read right now. Everyone's favorite online dating app. Ugh. Fucking face. Don't get me started on online dating. And um, I came across your bio and I let out a very emasculine noise. I mean, it was not. Is that a word? I don't know. It's kind of damn happen, buddy. But it was not. I honestly, I was like, this chick's made up. My first thought was that my mom paid you to write that bio just to make my day better. And I was curious just to like ask you how much. But the more I read, I was like, holy fuck, this person's been kind of weird. And I just figured I'd say howdy. And that if I talked to myself like an asshole for a couple of minutes, you'd probably feel the same as me. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know the depths of your soul from a couple cursory sentences and some photos. But uh, I am a very good judge of character. I'm a keen study of like personality and psychology. And, uh, you know, I've, I've... He, I, I also I hate that he called himself a keen study. He's a keen study. He's not a he's a keen study in how to have a terrible personality, by the way. In the trenches of online dating for a couple of years, so I definitely know how to identify the kind of person. I'm like, eh, if nothing else, the world would be better if we were friends. So hear me out. Um, first of all, I never fucking see that shrug emoji. No one else uses it. It's typed into my phone. If I type, if I type shrug with, remember this the shrug emoji that he fucking types at. He loves the fucking the shrug emoji. Oh. Two G's, it just shows up. Same thing on my laptop. Like, I'll use it in work emails. Fuck it. Um, so right Fuck away, I'm it. like, huh, interesting. I don't get it, though. She's cute. For how pretty she is, she should be boring. 
why does she seem kind of strange in a good way? Um, I think you said something about live music. My job is actually live music. I play guitar and sing. I do about 25 shows a month. Uh, I know it sounds made up. I feel like I invented the job. It's redonkulous, but I live very comfortably. Life is. Oh, he called it. It's redonkulous. It's it's redonkulous. He couldn't just say it's ridiculous. It's redonkulous. That's that is a that is like a decades old phrase. No one, no one says that anymore. And he wasn't being, he wasn't like joking. Like he wasn't like joke being an asshole. This is him being sincere. So, you know, he uses that word. It's good. Um, I do play at a lot of retirement homes and it's great for my self-esteem, Kels, as I am a big hit with women over 80. I had my ass grabbed by someone named Ethel last week. And for a second, I was pissed and a little put upon. And I was like, honestly, I've been working on that. So thank you. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, yeah. So this is another element of, of what you will see. Uh, because right now, again, all, all we're hearing is a guy with a dog shit personality leaving a weird voice message for a chick, right? It's kind of embarrassing, kind of cringe but probably not worth a a totally viral uh, tweet. There's more coming, but I want you to remember those little beats, um, like where he's talking about his job as a musician, he talks into microphones, old ladies love him, all of that bullshit. That's, that's why we have to hear all of this, because those will become very important in short order. I'll take it. Uh, but yes, um, it's just... Oh, yeah. And just the night before, I'd been talking to one of my best friends in the world, Roxy. Um, just people that, like, match you and they just write, hey. So if someone writes, hey, I just write hi. And if someone writes, sup, I go, nothing much, you. And, like, people that match me and clearly haven't read my fucking bio, folks will match and be like, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, uh, come on, Chelsea. Like, yeah, you're kind of cute, but I'm pretty damn sweet. Try harder. I don't know. It's just to see someone mention that in a bio, I'm like, thank you. I can see that you feel the same as me. <laughs> I'm just getting nauseated listening to this. I don't even have anything to say. I'm just getting nauseous, literally nauseous, listening to this guy speak and and put forward what he feels uh, is is uh, a, a personality. And like a personality that he's clearly very proud of. Um, yeah, if people, I, I always think that effort should match interest in dating. So if you're curious if someone's interested or not, um, remember that scene with Justin Long and what's her face in that movie about dating is that he's just not that into you and he's like if the guy's interested he will call and it's true so I found a line a couple of years ago where it's like effort will always match interest it will show you how interested someone is and like I'm pretty goddamn sweet and I am not that lonely bored or horny I'm not going to take breadcrumbs from someone if I want a sandwich so if someone hits me with a hey or hi you can go fuck yourself I'm worth more damn it this is where the Kelly Clarkson song comes in um, but, uh, yeah, no, your bio is just, there was so much intentional effort put in. And honestly, the more I scroll down in the pics, I'm like, this does not match up. I don't want to sound like an asshole, like attractive. Too bad. I'm sorry. You've, if you don't want to, I, I know you don't want to sound like an asshole, but the truth of the matter is you sound like an enormous asshole. People can also be interesting and funny, but it's it's just incredibly rare. I speak uh, speak for myself because I'd like. Okay, so so right now what we have is just a guy who sounds kind of like a douchebag, right? Oh wait, there's more. There's more. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um. Okay. So, <laughs> this fucking jerk off. For the love of fuck. Okay. Before I went... So then she writes, after... After this just slew of voice messages, she writes, Dude, you saw me on Bumble and found me on Facebook. How? And... He says, Oh, I honestly just typed in Kelsey and I guess I got lucky. Figured because you put live music, we might have friends in common or something. I blame Zuckerberg. Okay. So here's his next round of voice messages. I was like two minutes into one and it was awesome and funny. And I was so proud of it. And then someone called me again about a gig this evening. And oh it's no, like, it's the same shit. You know that thing where your friends know you're busy or you're on no, a date or not. something. And then that's when they decide to call. Jesus Christ. 
we'll uh, we'll take it as a good sign. Um, so I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but yeah, no, your bio was just the fucking bee's knees. I mean, listen, top three in like the hundreds or thousands I've seen, it was just, I don't know. I'm a very good judge of character and you just seem like my kind of person. And I'm not saying we're star-crossed lovers. I don't know you and you don't know me, but um, generally the bios hurt my brain and make me think that maybe I should just try the other sex or not talk to people anymore. And yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. I, I honestly wouldn't even swipe on someone that lived in Brantford, but I meant what I said. Like, I think the world would be a better place if you and I were friends if nothing else. So I fully accept how strange and unconventional this is. I, and you hear the way he speak. oh, the world would be a better place if we were friends. He uses a lot of, someone had a, uh, a great comment about this. Um, what did uh, she called it? She, uh, she commented, Hey, I just wanted to add my voice to the uh, choir of people who have told you, thanks for speaking out uh, about the whole Ryan Andrews situation. That's this guy's name. And you're going to find out about what the whole situation is shortly. Um, it's definitely been a moment of reflection for me in terms of that whole kind of podcast voice he does, especially the way he uses swearing as every part of speech or terminally online voice that can serve as a mask for toxic ideas that are ingrained in men from a very early age. Um, someone in your comments posted how Jim Halpert broke a generation of men and I definitely think that's true within this context. Um, yeah. So basically what's going on is this guy, leave, he, he, he does these voice messages and the shruggy emoji and all this shit where he's kind of acting like a uh, like soft, like beta, cocky, good guy-ish, like fucking Mr. Nice Guy. These are the ones who are doing th this online stalking um, are guys who pretend to be like all wholesome and shit. Anyway, we'll continue with this and then I'll show you where this thread goes because it is, it is a fucking treat. I just, I got a vibe and I figured I got to go with it. I was like in a really good mood that day. I don't know. <laughs> I'm totally winging it, but um, yeah, a lot of my close friends are women and Everyone, unfortunately, has a couple stories of having to block someone's number or an ex just won't leave them alone or going to the cops. Fuck, dude, I've had to block a few numbers of crazy people that didn't know they were crazy. So I really, really apologize sincerely if this in any way like triggered that or it was weird or whatever. Uh, Kelsey, that's the furthest thing from my intention. I just wanted to say howdy. And I he's just see here. He's using all the buzzwords about like triggering and stuff like that. He's acting like, acting, no, no, no. He's a guy. He respects women. He respects women. I figured if I talk like an idiot, you'd probably feel like I did after I looked at your bio. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes now. What would I want to know if I was Kelsey? Oh, okay. It's not fair. You've seen mine. Or, sorry, I've seen yours and you have not seen mine. By the way, this guy, this guy has so much Doug Bell in him. Like this. Does he do the ch ch, -ch? It's not fair. You've seen mine. Or, sorry, I've seen yours and you have not seen mine. If you want, I will screenshot my Bumble. No, is that it? Did I miss it? That was Kelsey. Oh, that's that is that's literally Doug Bell. Ba, 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 ba. Like, that's that fucking this guy is fucking Doug Bell. Okay, it's not fair. You've seen mine, or sorry, I've seen yours, and you have not seen mine. If you want, I will screenshot my Bumble bio. I'm quite proud of it. I think it's pretty fucking good. It represents me well. And um, what else would I want to know if I was you? Gee, I'm like six feet tall, um, pretty damn handsome. I'd give me like a seven. No, like a seven and a half out of 10 looks wise. I mean, to my knowledge, no one has dated me for my abs or my hair. I'm guessing it's because I'm funny and honest and clearly very humble and go to therapy and emotionally intelligent. Okay, so that's, you may not know about this uh, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're married or whatever, but that is the the whole the whole new thing uh on online dating like apps like bumble and shit uh are you know and and on social media as well are chicks talking about how more men need to be into therapy like how therapy is is important um and so in addition to all of like the nice guy shit that like that like cuck boys do and fucking whatever else They've also started announcing that they go to therapy and trying to work it into conversations because they've they've found out that emotional intelligence is important, that women 
you know, they value that kind of thing. Uh, but there's still, there's still a mental block in a lot of, you know, people's like, they just, they're just parroting the behavior, right? It's not like this guy is actually, you know, if this guy had actually made an investment in his mental health, he probably wouldn't be stalking women on social media. Um, so he's just, they're just, uh, there's a parroting of behavior that goes on. So, but um, oh, we'll let him finish. We'll yeah, let him finish. You know, oh, he's got another two happen. minutes here. I'm feeling really fucking good. Like, oh, he's an eight. He gives himself an eight. Up to like 80 second side planks. I hate them, but they're totally worth it for the core. I fucking hate that. Yeah, he really is. He really is like that person who commented and made the Jim Halpert reference. Like this guy is a fucking a guy who he watched the office. He saw that, you know, Jim got Pam uh, and is one of those dumbasses that that believes that Jim and Pam are a good example of what, a, you know, what a strong, healthy relationship should look like. So he wants to he knows that chicks love Jim Halpert because there are a lot of idiots uh, in our country who just because they like the show don't read that context of Jim and Pam being terrible people. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, Pams on Bumble looking for their gyms. Um, so that is what he's trying to be. He is literally trying to be uh, a Jim Halpert. And um, big feet, so you know what that means, baby doll. Big socks. <laughs> um, what else? I feel like I didn't tell you enough about the bio too. That shrug emoji was just, if nothing else, the fact that like you look like a Disney princess and you use that, I'm like, fuck it, I got to talk to her. So um Oh, I was definitely getting strong Kirsten Bell vibes too. And she's awesome. I don't know if you listen to her husband's podcast, Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard. I know it's quite the reference, but I have a feeling you might know what that is. One of my favorite episodes actually, um, is it Lauren Graham that plays Lorelai? She was on there. Anyway, I am um, all over the fucking place. This is my, my job. Uh, but I'm sitting here, a middle-aged guy in his car with the AC on and a SpongeBob shirt. And I would call this like the technological version of, you know, when like Noah stops Allie in the notebook and he's like, I ah, just... You hear, you see, you hear there. He mentioned SpongeBob and the Notebook. He's right because he's not. This guy does. He is. He's not. He's not watching the NFL or the UFC, right? He's watching SpongeBob and the Notebook, right? He's different than other guys. He's he's fucking. He's he's cheeky and fucking unique, like Jim Halpert. I have to talk to you when I see something I want. <laughs> yes, I just made a notebook reference. I don't know. I'm I'm being a total idiot right now. So if nothing else, I figured you'd have a laugh and a smile and you can fucking make fun of me to your friends. I don't know. Now you have a solo podcast for a guy that makes like six grand a month on a microphone being an idiot. I'm sorry. I don't normally bring up money, but I feel like I created my job out of thin air and like I just submitted my 2022 taxes and shit's been getting so much better the last few years. So I'm quite proud of it. That wasn't me trying to uh, impress you though with money. I've got way more impressive shit than that. Uh, it just slipped out. I hope we can still be friends. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm all over the place, but uh, you look like a goddamn Disney princess. The bio completely floored me. I felt like it was written by a friend or something. I just got like strong, like fellow neurodivergent, super cool um gregarious happy person vibes and uh yeah by the way he's a neurodivergent i believe i think neurodivergent is like the i think it's the phrase that people use now to describe someone who's on the spectrum is that you know he's not he's oh he's neurodivergent i i believe that is what that is i'm not positive so listen, I'm an open book. You probably figured that out like six over shares ago. If you have any yeah, we'd be much me, better off. Please hit me. Don't be shy. Uh, if you book. want, I'll share my bio. Close I feel like it's unfair. Fucking but, lock you know, and key. Now, <laughs> I like how the first, the first, the first comment that I saw here is. This guy is definitely into date rape. Um, <laughs> followed up by, yeah, he doesn't deserve to walk around with this much confidence. Oh, but he does. Oh, but he does. Because there is so much more. And this is what we really need to, to get into. Um, oh, there's a, there's a, <laughs> Holy fucking shit. There's another oh, one just in... you any bad vibes. That's not my intention. 
Um, yeah, I gotta drive home now because I gotta go. He did it again. Ba ba ba. Listen, listen, listen. You don't deserve those other guys. They don't deserve you. You're a fucking Disney princess. Sing at a bar in Mississauga, and I have four more gigs this weekend, and it hurts to talk. So <laughs> I'm sitting here in my car like a jackass, and uh, yeah, I hope that all made sense. I hope he's, I hope he's on a, a fucking set of rain, r- r- fucking railroad tracks. Jesus Christ, that came out poorly. Son of a bitch. <laughs> hope he's on the fucking railroad tracks. Cocksucker! kind of sense and if nothing else please take the sincere compliment i've seen hundreds of shitty bios probably thousands and yours was easily top three the only reason i'm not giving you number one is because then it would seem like i'm lying but i'm a very genuine honest person and uh yeah actually on my way home i'm gonna go to the park and feed the ducks my favorite oh oh fuck did i forget about this oh yeah oh yeah here we go one of his big hobbies is going to the park to feed the ducks. He does this is another another layer of his bullshit nice guy act. Swan couple, Mr. Plump and Mr. Plum, and Mrs. Plumfet. They just had babies a couple weeks ago. So like I'll run up and they recognize me and the babies are squeaking. The hierarchy of like waterfowl cute babies, it goes swan babies, then ducklings, and then goslings. But um, yes, I may or may not do that four to seven times a week. I'm a huge animal lover. Dogs are better than cats, cats suck. Sorry if you have cats, but I'm sure your cat is. Also, if you're an animal lover, you would love cats in addition to dogs. You wouldn't you wouldn't be an animal lover uh, who hates cats. Cool. And uh, yeah, take the compliment. Anyway, uh, apologies if this totally like, intruded on your day opposite of my intention. And uh, yeah, your bio was fucking awesome. I mean, there's a couple other assets I noticed too, but I cannot mention them without sounding like a fuck boy. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm sure you've worked very hard to be in the shape you're in, but goddamn lady. God damn, I would not kick you out of bed for eating crackers. So I figured if you are half as funny as you seem to be and half as cool as I got from that bio, I would say howdy. Um, Yeah, all right. Hope this made you laugh and smile. And uh, you have a fantastic old day, Kelsey. Cheers. I just want, he also, he he said, have a fantastical day. I want to slap the shit out of him. Now, you might think, well, you know, that's just, weird that's a weird thing to do right that would be a weird thing to do once the next day after i saw this thread uh came the uh the first update update this is not the first time ryan andrews has done this he pulled the same thing with that alley sf in summer of 2021 shared with permission are there any other women in southwestern Ontario slash the GTA this man has invaded and harassed in this way? Please DM me if uh, if it has. Okay. So here's this message. Let's get too big. Oh, it's easier to see like this. Uh, hey, that same guy messaged me. And here he writes, the, uh, I mean, he just writes, I don't know if he speaks like a bigger asshole or if he fucking writes like a bigger asshole and i mean look far be it for me to accuse anyone of being long-winded and self-indulgent but jesus christ here's here's what he says oh damn howdy uh firstly let me say i know this is weird def not a serial killer also not trying to get you into a, a pyramid scheme or sell you tupperware yet on the tupperware part If you give me the tiniest bit of room to explain, I bet you'll laugh and everyone's day will be better. She writes back, okay, interested to hear uh, the explanation. And he says, oh, hell yeah, let's do this. Warning, I am ridiculous and quite goofy. Plus, I've had some coffee today. Oh, watch out. I'm like the opposite of a Gilmore girl right now. They need more of it. I should not be allowed to have any. Here goes nothing. And then I'm assuming, are there voice notes with this one? There are a lot of voice notes. No voice notes with that one. Um, Then the next update came in the day after that. Update number two. Confirmed this has happened to two additional women. 
one in 2016 and one in 2017. I will not be sharing the details of the 2016 encounter to protect her identity, safety, and peace, but you can find the mention of the 2017 encounter here from at Hotlanta. Uh, she says, uh, yes, he saw me on Tinder. We did not match and then found me on Facebook. I blocked and deleted him, but it was the same insanity and the increasingly erratic voice notes. This creep has been at it for years. Well, at some point you might've thought that that was going to be the only, that was going to be it. There would be no more updates. You would be wrong if you thought that because update number three shared with permission this encounter with ryan happened in november 2021 and can be seen here uh if there are any other women who have been approached by this man please dm me don't reply here this thread is muted but my dms are open uh so again yeah there's no way i wish there was a way to fucking zoom this thing in um he writes alessia I mean, uh, K okay, nuts. Mayhaps that was a tad overly enthusiastic for a stranger danger DM on a chilly Sunday afternoon. He that's literally what he opened with on the other one. Uh, my bad. Let's go with uh, uh, I can explain. Fuck yeah, that works. And then he he does like the a couple laughing emojis and the big shrug fucking thing again um let's see I, there are more there are more voice notes i probably here's another voice note okay update number four another story from 2016 shared with permission we're going back at least seven years with this behavior folks she writes okay let's get to hear my lovely delicious voice and i sound going i'm uh, sorry for being all cryptic i did not mean to it's just by the time you messaged me back last night it was kind of late didn't want to wake up my glorified roommate um yeah I, I could just type all this but this this way you get to hear my lovely delicious voice and i how much do you hate him for referring to it as his lovely delicious voice sound cooler and less crazy anyway long story short um i just saw you in tinder and normally Okay, I'm sorry. I'm reading the uh, the notes that are uh, are scrolling here. The one chick said she thinks she's flattered, and then just stopped responding because I guess eventually got weirded Normally out. Normally, I would have been like, "All right, cute white chick, nice butt. All right, I'll swipe right." But the stuff you wrote was really cool. Um, who the fuck doesn't like art dogs and music? And uh, who the fuck doesn't like art, dogs, and music? By the way, it literally every fucking every every chick's fucking Bumble profile is is you know things I love like that first sip of coffee on an autumn morning. You know how many fucking times you'll read that? It's insane. You know, it's not like these broads are giving him a lot to work with, but he is a, just a tremendous douchebag. Uh, who the fuck doesn't love art, dogs, and music? But I will say, in his defense, w women do put just monumentally stupid shit in their profiles. It's literally the, you know, it's the the, the vaginas are why we're swiping. <laughs> it's going to sound really silly, but I think your song thing was a song by Bright Eyes. I don't know that song, but, um, you know, their song, First Day of My Life. Uh, how do I tell a story without taking up hours? Uh, I work on cruise ships as a musician. Before that, I would gig in bars, but on cruise By the way, speaking of songs... I guarantee you this motherfucker loves that song, Hey There, Delilah, about, you know, the weirdo. He wrote that, they, they fucking wrote that song. The guy who wrote that song wrote it after he met this chick once. He met her once at, like, you know, in college when, like, you hang out with, you know, you know your friends have friends from their college over, and there's, like, a, you know, there's a hot chick in the group, and you meet her, and it's like, you're really, your shot with her is pretty much that night, or if by happenstance, at some point down the line, you know, you wind up in the in the same the same area. Maybe you have a chance, but you don't. Generally, you wouldn't fall madly in love in a situation like that. You know, you know what I mean. Cruise ships. 
I'd have to play a lot of the stuff that like older going. Uh, sorry for being all cryptic. I did not mean. Yeah. Yeah. And you might think, well, that's that's horrible. But certainly, that's that's the end of it, right? No. Uh, remember, the guy's name is Ryan. Um, here's the next. Uh, this is update number five. Hey, saw your post about Ryan Andrews. I thought I'd share my story about him as well. It's a little different. I was out. I was out with a group of guy friends at a bar in Guelph a few years ago. These are places in Canada. I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, and Ryan was actually the musician playing at the bar. He asked the entire bar to follow him on Instagram in order to grow his followers. So to be kind and support a local musician. I gave him what I thought was a harmless follow. Five minutes later, he's taking a break from playing music, and while I'm still sitting at a table in the bar with all my friends, he starts messaging me about how pretty I am, etc., and asks if I want to stick around and hang out with him after he's done playing. I tell him no thanks and that I have other plans and then leave the bar with my friends. Within minutes of leaving the bar, he's blowing up my phone, asking where I went, if he can meet up. Um, uh, within minutes of leaving the way, he's asking if he can meet up with me somewhere else once he's done playing music for the night, etc. I stop replying. A few hours later, when he's finished his gig for the night, I get a series of nonstop voice notes, very similar to what you shared. And he's added me on multiple other social media channels. I blocked him at that point and sadly no longer have all the convos saved as this was years ago. Just wanted to share. The guy is definitely a weirdo. Um, and maybe that was going to be it. Maybe he did this. Look, you're out there trying different things. You try, you know, a couple, five times sending messages like that. Certainly this wouldn't happen a sixth time. <laughs> update six shared with permission from a couple months ago he found this girl's friend on ig after interacting with them for under a minute a few months ago innocuous on its own but part of the pattern of behavior um here he is uh let's see so he did the exact same thing here's the pic here's a picture of him strumming the old banjo He looks like a guy who who wants to be Jim Halpert. I definitely get that vibe from him. Oh no, update number seven. Uh, this is perhaps the most insidious so far. This dates back to a decade ago and involves a woman who was only 20, 21 at the time. He slapped her and told her she liked it not giving her the space to decide for herself how she felt. Um, here we go. So this goes back 10, 11 years ago. Ryan was doing, has been doing this a long time. We had a mutual guy friend on Facebook, exchanged commentary on a post or two before he added me. I was maybe 20, 21. He did make himself come off busy with his gigs and so on. So one day... We went out to have a pitcher of beer at a Boston pizza. I thought it was harmless, but it did feel like he was sort of assessing me. It didn't vibe or click, but we were friendly enough that I thought the night was going to end okay. He dropped me off at home. Luckily, I live in a townhouse complex, and he left me in the parking lot. He leaned in to kiss me, grabbed my neck, and slapped me. It was like a test slap to see how I responded to it. I was frozen, and then he told me that I liked it, and that was that. Shortly after, we got into a heated argument under a post where he was defending an abuser and asked what the women did to deserve it. <laughs> oh, yeah. His whole fucking nice guy act, right? <laughs> Real good. Yeah, what a guy. He's feeding the ducks at the park. But then he's on fucking Facebook talking about, well, maybe... Maybe dinner was a little bit cold and maybe a martini at 515 when I walk in the door means a martini at 515 when I walk in the door. 
uh, it's not until now in my big age that when I talk about the experience that I was actually uh, assaulted and uh, blah, blah, blah. When I asked my friend, how did he know him? He said he didn't really know him intimately. They just had pleasant exchanges under some posts and realized they lived in the GTA. I was young and stupid and completely caught off guard. Please uh, feel free to uh, share my experience, what have you. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, that is update seven. Update seven. What comes after seven? Update eight. Oh, my God. Another woman's encounter with him on Hinge. This includes, yes, it includes his profile. That'll be fun. Uh, so here we go. Is this the, uh, hi, thank you for sharing about this creep. It rang a bell and sure enough, one of my girlfriends, uh, had shared something from him in our group chat earlier this year. She doesn't have Twitter, so I'm sharing with her permission. Hey, Tara, I have just one thing to say to you. Are you, are you ready? Are you, are you ready? For what is, what is coming here? We'll go. We'll take it from the top. Here we go. Hey Tara, I have just one thing to say to you. It's a bit of advice. If I touch you like this, <laughs> and you kiss me like that, it was so long ago, but it's all. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? I love that part of your bio, by the way. That made. Me Ooh. <laughs> oh, 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 holy shit. Oh, my God. So, um, so he comments, she has in her profile here, it says, uh i'll fall for you if you can sing every word if it's all coming back to me now and he comments with a couple of the lyrics and then says when i get tipsy at bar gigs i bring out celine covers for laughs kelly clarkson too you're a gem date me um and then that's when he left that this voice note me chuckle and i think there's something in there about like hey if you laugh at my jokes well guess what i'm fucking hilarious i make my living on a microphone talking and singing who would who would have guessed that right um Ooh. i wouldn't have i honestly i would not have guessed that you make your living doing this i would have guessed that you make your living doing anything else perhaps perhaps an occupation that doesn't require you to say a fucking word like data entry or something like that is how i would have guess that you make your living at no point would i have guessed that people give you money to speak just trying to perk myself up out of a bad mood because my bar gig this evening just canceled on me with pretty much no notice those 300 bucks cash i'm not making tonight um but yes this match made me chuckle again and obviously you're a very pretty lady and you seem like my kind of funny so uh hey how's it going my name's ryan six feet tall big uh, big feet sing for a living humble uh, we should be friends. Anyway, I hope this made you laugh and smile. That was the point. And I look forward to chatting with you. Cheers. Oh, he's, he ends it with cheers. People who fucking say cheers to end, like, cheers. Like, that's how you speak. Like, you're a little, you know, you're kind of hip. You don't say see ya, like, all right, later. Uh, you know, whatever. I like a nice adios, motherfucker. Um, he's cheers. Like, he's kind of a hip guy. Hey, hey, cheers. Yeah, you're a real hip guy. Real hip guy. Oh, is this... Uh, this is his profile. Okay. So here he is right here. Strumming the old banjo. Right? Gotta have that. Gotta have that pic picture. Of, you gotta lead with your, the picture of yourself playing the guitar, right? That'll get you some pussy. Chicks love that. Um, green flags I look for. This is his profile. You also go to therapy with a blue heart next to it. 
Self-awareness is sexy. I also go nuts for emotional availability slash intelligence. This is just, this is literally just you put this shit into your profile uh, because you've seen chicks writing that in their profile. He's just, he's just trying to mimic that. That's exactly what this is. And I can also tell you that because he uses the line here, a big, a big flirt to roast ratio also helps too. And then he has two emojis. He is literally speak. Do you know how many times you will see in chicks profiles that you have to have a good flirt to roast ratio? They, everyone, they all want a good flirt to roast ratio. He, he is going out of his way. This is a crafted effort to look and sound like exactly what he thinks uh, a, a woman who describes herself as a Pam looking for her gym. He thinks that's what they would like. So he is attempting to cultivate this as his, uh, as his personality. We got more. There's a video of him playing, playing one of his great bar gigs. There he is. Look at this douchebag. This is, this is, this might be one of the, uh, one of the most punchable faces. I'm sorry. One of the most punchable faces I've ever seen. The picture says pre coffee me. And it's a selfie of him, so, you know, sunny day, maybe a little bit cool out. He's got a, a jacket on, North Face, and a, a winter cap. So you can tell. This is how he likes spend some time outside. He's not inside playing video games, Call of Duty, anything like that. It's outside. Nature here. It says, uh, my simple pleasures. Dogs feeding ducks at the park. Memes and a good phone call now and then. They call me Duck Daddy. Feel free to ask about this title. And he's got a duck emoji down there. Yeah, he's really leaning into this bullshit like he loves animals and fucking memes. Chicks are always writing on, on Bumble how they they like getting great memes sent to them. Um, the Duck Daddy, oh, it's a fun nickname, something to ask him about. I mean, this is this this profile is not a snapshot of this guy's personality. This profile is a constructed effort to make uh to make sort of dumb basic white chicks like him. Of course he's got the he's got the picture in there of, of him with his dog. It says help me identify this photo bomber. The, if you want to use that, what you should do is have someone behind you with like Jeffrey Epstein's face. Like that would be funny. Uh, my greatest strength, Gilmer, Gilmore girl level, level banter without the coffee, 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 that and my voice. Yeah, he's very big on talking about his voice. Guess the backstory of this photo, and it's just him in a car with some balloons. If I had to guess, honestly, I what I would truly say about this picture is that he read somewhere in an like a, an article about creating a great online dating profile that you should have fun, funky stuff in your background to make it make yourself stand out and like your personality and all that bullshit. So he he bought some balloons and shot a photo uh, of himself in his car with uh, with balloons. If I had to guess, how history will remember me, and it's him. He's dressed. He's just. It's a very Brooklyn douchey vibe out of him. Like he seems like the kind of guy who would uh, un, not consensually finger a drunk chick. At a bar in Williamsburg, after a few uh, a few mason jars full of gin. Uh, 
Um, they go back to the top. You do not get to hear me sing for free. You know, I. Oh, wait, hold on. I hope we didn't miss. It's got more to say. I don't want to. He deserves. Oh, come on okay, now. Here we go. You do not get to hear me sing for free. You know, I do this full time, so people pay me quite a bit, right? I, All right, I like If you scroll down, I don't believe there is that. a video of me singing <laughs> Mr. Brightside to a bunch of very happy drunks at a bar gig. It was a request. I had to do it. I also sing at a lot of retirement homes and nursing homes, so uh, I know what you're thinking, and I will confirm it. I am a big hit with women over 90. They call me young and handsome. Occasionally, I get my butt grabbed. It's awesome. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. By the way, that's that is the second voice memo we've heard him use that old lady line in okay, and uh, chats in cheers fucking cocksucker keeps saying cheers i fucking ha i fucking hate it don't say cheers you fucking asshole unless you're talking to someone named norm norm oh good well if eight updates weren't enough for you we do have a ninth this woman matched with ryan andrews on hinge a couple months ago this is how it went in her words Shared with permission, keeping it anonymous. Um, let's see. He gave me the ick and made me really uncomfortable, so I stopped messaging him back. And after seeing what you and other women experienced, I'm glad I did. Uh, I think I offer a different perspective because I did match with him rather than him find me on social media. This guy needs to be stopped. This whole nice guy who's safe and not like the others because he goes to therapy and is emotionally intelligent. His words, watches Gilmore Girls, is best friends with his mom, sings to old people, and watches swans is a charade. His, his actions are inexcusable. And I guarantee you there are many more stories out there of him, uh, him coming on too. Uh, yeah, because she says that uh, he was just blowing up her phone all day, uh, making sexual references, uh, but insisting that he's not a fuck boy uh, and leaving her weirdo voice notes. So that was number nine, I think. Well, here's number 10. Um, Ryan Andrews is 36. He found out where a 20 year old girl he'd seen on Bumble worked, called her workplace to ask after her three to four times and left a review. Her brothers had to walk her home for a while for her to feel safe. Um, he called my workplace. He asked if I worked there and said we connected on a dating app, which he didn't, and that he'd lost connection to it, so he wanted to find another way to reach out to me. He left his full name, though, Ryan Andrews. I'm also 20, and I'm sure he's far older, so that really freaked me out. Um. He left a review on on Foursquare at my workplace saying, uh, or Square, Foursquare, whatever the fuck. He knew me from the app and asked when I would be coming in next and that regardless, he'd be coming in to buy some products. He called he called about three or four times and spoke to two coworkers about me. I was too nervous to go to work or walk home alone after work that my brothers had to begin walking me home for a while. And this is literally a message that he sent uh, to the company name, Ryan message. I'm looking for an employee. We met on a dating site and something happened on my end. And I know it's a long shot, but when is she in again? Um, When so I, I guess uh, she called after he called the store. She checked the caller ID and called him back. And what the fuck happened? He laughed. She was asking him for his number. She, he laughed and said, "Embarrassing! How do I not know my own number? He's just a fucking tool, and he's just he's a tool with a juicy voice." Uh, was that update number ten? Oh well, we have an update number. Number 11, I realize we're going way over time this evening, but this son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, 
Apparently his real name is Ryan Conapud, and he's been behaving this way since before the GTA in Alberta. I don't know where all these weirdo Canadian places is, but uh, not sharing any further details to protect this person, but you can see what they've said below. He's a creep going back years. Some of us went to the cops and one showed us uh, that he was and one showed us that he was in the system, but the cop wouldn't say for what. Not surprised. He's still a fuck nut. I'm happy to see he's being called out, but he might freak. Yeah, this guy could do a mass shooting. We don't know. Update number 12 shared with permission. This is from 2018. And we'll take a couple tweets. It's bulky. Um, another one who says he sent multiple voice notes unprovoked, unpro unprovoked with sexual undertones. Um, they never matched on any dating site. And that's when he launched into the whole, hey, I can explain, I can explain thing. Um, so he just started, he started sending all these bullshit Gilmore girl messages. Oh, this chick's name is Jess. And he started calling her Jessicals. Um, and he would start, he would end his voice notes by saying, I love you. And every one of the notes included the same references, the really big feet. And then he, he chugged, <laughs> you know, a uh, really big feet, well, six feet tall, really big feet. You know what that means, baby doll. Um, he said he gives good back rubs and made mention of himself being a musician at least six times. Yeah. Yeah. He just, he's, he just fat, you know, he got it in his head that guys who play music get pussy. So he's just cramming it down their throats. Um, so she shared these um she shared these screen grabs of him just constantly commenting and emojiing on her Instagram stories writing holy tits jessicals the emotional roller coaster of your insta stories today lol so many feelings um and I know I'm reading a lot of his stuff to you guys but cuz I this was all developing over a series of days, uh, like over the last week or so. And I want you to experience every ounce of disgust that I have, I have experienced. Um, update 12 continued. The screen recording is a very similar voice memos to what I received down to Disney princess line and big feet line. They just keep coming. Uh, let's hear, let's hear these. I'm sure he comes up with some good creative original stuff. Hey, Jess, how's it going? Uh, yeah, don't mind me. I, I just really don't like texting. Um, I avoid it wherever possible. Uh, plus, since one of my goals right now is to convince you that I'm not a fucking serial killer, this should hopefully help. Um, okay, so I did <laughs> a little bit of investigating. You, know, you never want to be a person who has to spend a lot of time explaining to people that you're not a serial killer, by the way. That's a good hint that you're doing something that's somewhat antisocial. And I think I have a good guess as to what's going on here. Uh, no, we haven't met. You would remember. I would too. Um, <laughs> and here's where the embarrassing myself part comes in. But you know what? Like I would, I would. You know, it's embarrassing. You know, it's embarrassing. I'm trying to do a show here, a podcast. And I keep getting this like blank, uh, Asperger's -y look on my face after I hear him speaking for a few seconds because I can feel myself getting fucking dumber. That's embarrassing. I would make the strong argument that I am uh, quite good or at least practiced at embarrassing myself, usually in a microphone. Quite I am a full-time musician, which means I play guitar and sing about 20, 25 times a month to strangers. And quite often in between songs, I'll talk shit, talk about my day. If people are down to laugh, I'm in. Anyway, um, embarrassing myself. Okay, here goes. And hopefully this explanation will make everyone stay better and we can continue on mystery self. Uh, so, and again, just to remind your best Jesus guess here. Christ. I suspect that uh, sometime, I guess, last winter, apparently in October, I saw you on some sort of online dating thing, you know, 
Tinder, Bumble. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I think online dating is like anything in life. You could use it. And if you're smart at it, you can meet some great people. And if you're not, you'll get chlamydia or children. <laughs> Too far? I don't know. I shouldn't. Oh, he just cracks himself up. He's just a jokester. A real jokester. <laughs> Too far. Whoa, watch out. With, with this guy, you got to buckle up because it could be a wild ride is, I think, what he's trying to get across. Make jokes like that if I don't know you well. I apologize. Please don't be offended and write a blog about me. Um, That's it. Well, he's letting you know you're safe with him. He's just playing. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. He's got a you know, he's goofy sense of humor. Yeah, so it's at some point there, I'm guessing, I just saw you in one of those. You listed your Instagram or it was linked. And uh, knowing me, even like, you know, winter eight months ago, me and and now me, who I know pretty well, we're, we're good buddies. Um, I was probably like, oh, hey, look, it's an Australian girl who looks like a fucking Disney princess. Uh, I want He's using the Disney princess line again. You notice that every fucking voice memo he puts together is the same. One of those in my life maybe she's funny and smells nice and doesn't have cats if you're either two of those three things by the way please let's be friends and then i guess i followed you on instagram and because i'm such a fucking genius apparently i didn't say hi or anything and i just decided to forget why or he was being self-deprecating like he's really he's trying to be cool funny guy jim he is really going out of his way to be old jimmy halpert that I guess I guess because I'm a complete fucking idiot. For where I added you from and then just react to your stories. I don't know. I got a lot of friends on here, people I've met at gigs. And uh, yeah. Scroll up. That's used to be the case. <laughs> so sorry. I apologize. That's that's not. Uh, you know, as a full-time musician, I'll more. get a lot of friends requests more. from people that I haven't met, but I see we have, like, mutual friends on Facebook. And, and, you know, I know they mean well. They're probably just wanting to network or get people to come to their show. But it's like, hey, fuck you. If we haven't met, don't, like, friend request me without – say something. Be like, hey, Ryan, you know, I uh, met your buddy Matt at an open mic. Your Spice Girls cover was fantastic. Yada, yada, yada. Don't just say nothing. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, if, if Ryan here is the arbiter of what is and isn't weird. Although, I, I mean, I guess if anyone knows weird, it's him, you know. So I think I unintentionally did that here. And I'm hoping that you can forgive me, Jess, and that we can move on from this and hopefully find ourselves in a place where I'm allowed to give you nicknames. Sorry about that, by the way. I, I give everyone nicknames. Because he's fun. He's like a cool guy. That's what you got to get. Ryan, Ryan Matthews, whatever the fuck his name is. He's the kind of guy, you know, you run into the kitchen at a party, he's slicing limes, making margaritas, he's giving people nicknames, calling him boss, calling him chief. He's not the kind of weirdo that just stalks complete strangers on the internet and harasses them uh, with scripted uh, voice messages like he's a fucking telemarketer. Uh, he wouldn't do that. He would only He's only doing that because you're a great gal and he doesn't want to miss the opportunity. He's never done this fucking 17 times before. <laughs> so um hopefully that helps mystery solved and uh his fake uh, laugh is so a little bit more about me so i don't seem like a complete stranger uh i'd imagine i'm past the potential serial killer part here uh no full-time musician really said, leaning into uh, live very comfortably never have to wake up before 11 it's awesome uh, working for yourself uh what else six one i smell really good like i'm not just saying that like it's a source of pride i've been stopped by strangers before um ch -ch -ch, very good relationship with my mom she's awesome we're friends it's very gilmore girls-esque only last time i checked i got a dick uh on that note big feet <laughs> sorry um pfft, drive a 2010 mazda nope that's not something to brag about at all that you wouldn't that also by the way you've been lying about how successful you are as a musician that's not it's 2013 that's no one that's not a mark of success. You could say that I drive a 2010 Mazda because I, you know, read Ramit Sethi and he told me to not spend a lot of money on a car because I should be putting it into an index fund instead. Uh, but it's not your 2010 Mazda is actually not a, uh, a, a point of braggadocia.
of kids that I know about. Yes, that sound is me walking and knocking on wood. Oh, if you're Australian, um, I know how to play that song, K San by Cole Chisel. Yeah, you might be a little young for it, but I did a cruise ship contract when I used to work as a musician on celebrity cruise ships. And it went all around Australia and New Zealand. So I learned some Crowded House songs and uh, that one by uh, Cole Chisel because I heard that the, the locals fucking loved it. And whenever we had some Aussies, uh, you know, they'd get on in Sydney. Uh, yeah, they loved it. So I don't know, dude. If you got any questions, I'm an open book. Hit me. Yeah, he calls her dude because he's chill like that. You know what I mean? He's Jimmy Halpert. I don't know, dude. You don't be shy. And I do apologize for how weird this is and unconventional. But you know what? Weird isn't always bad. And I like to defy uh, convention on a normal basis. So, uh, oh, is he going to drop another cheers on her? Hold on. Yeah, if you want to chat sometime, I'm down. Um, I'd give, me, give me like a oh, seven and a half, done maybe an eight out of ten on a good. Oh, he rated himself a seven and a half again. Good day, looks wise. Um, personality, nine out of ten, all things considered. I mean, but someone has to be. Not a, there's not a fucking shit. Nine out of a hundred, if you're lucky on the personality. Like silly and goofy, like me too. If someone's like really basic or just shy, there's nothing wrong with that. They're probably someone's dream girl, but they're not going to get along with Mr. Doesn't shut the fuck up over here. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, I want to, that's who I want to befriend. befriend. I want to go hang out with the people who don't get along with Mr. Shut the doesn't shut the fuck up over here. The, because Mr. Doesn't shut the fuck up over here. In addition to being just completely insufferable to be around, definitely sounds like he's committed a date rape or two. <laughs> anyway, um, this kind of goes out saying, but damn, you're pretty. And if you're cool and want to chat, I'm in, I suppose I wouldn't say no. Alleged, oh shit. And allegedly, I, uh, of course, allegedly. I live in Mississauga. I don't know how long you've been in the GTA, uh, being from another fucking country, but uh, yeah, it's just west of Toronto. I drive everywhere for work. I put work in air quotes because, like, honestly, dude, when I play at pubs, it's just an excuse to get drunk and play 90s hits that only I want. It's basically paid practice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Let me know if you got any questions. Like I said, uh, I do apologize again. Hopefully this made you laugh a couple times. If it did, cool. We should be friends. I'm really funny and give killer back rubs. If not, you're boring. He described himself as funny. He described himself as funny. He told her that he's funny. There was a guy... I went to college with who got into stand up for a little while. And this was back before like podcasting and everything really became a thing. It was like right after we graduated. So it was like there was there were blogs kind of. And he had a blog and he would end every blog with his name and I'm hilarious. He is uh to my knowledge, he is no longer doing stand-up comedy frank no i'm just kidding uh yeah all right hope you're having a great day okay love you bye now you might be thinking wait hold on scroll up that's more is to be the case <laughs> so sorry i apologize that's that's not uh is there more me like a seven and a half maybe an eight out of ten no okay day. we listened to all three of this of this one in any case there is a update 13 two separate women in 2015 2016 uh where he is texting one asking are you 18 yet so you can come watch me at bar gigs, you derp? In a few months, right? Bring the boyfriend. I'll let you get on stage and sing a few. We can compare versions of Folsom. Folsom. Uh, presumably Folsom Prison. Presumably Folsom Prison. Ryan Matthews chatting with a woman he believes to be 17. Um, but you have to wear baggy ass clothes so people aren't biased. Can't be looking all pretty and stylish. No fair. Wow. This guy actually, this is what it sounds like. I listen to Chris Hansen's podcast every morning before I go to work. And he replays uh, the chat. He like, uh, they talk through the chats uh, that the predators are having with the, uh, the decoys. And this is exactly what they sound like in the chats. 
by the way, the chick hasn't responded uh, to any of these, but he continues talking to himself. You whore. I trusted you. You double whore. Friendship over. Then the next day he writes, hey, Foxicle, are you just bad with answering texts? Like regular white girl lush, I have cat I have cat's behavior? Or should I stop trying to be your friend? I'm down with either. Just thought I'd ask. Every one of those texts was completely unanswered. Now, if 13 wasn't enough, there is a 14th update. Um, this is from a fellow musician who runs in the same same circuits as Ryan Andrew Conopud shared anonymously and with permission. I am a musician. I'm a musician in the area that's been gigging here for years and was approached by Ryan a year or so ago. When I rejected him, he lashed out at me and told me I was a whore and encouraged cancel culture. I proceeded to block him and he made seven to eight more accounts so he could harass me via different social channels. He threatened to take away all my gigs, slander my name at venues, and make sure I didn't get hired in the area. He is very violent and dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. It's nice to see that karma has finally made its way around. A friend sent me this thread this morning and I knew exactly who it was before she sent me the screenshots, which is telling enough. Jesus Christ. I want to do the fake. That... <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a seven, seven and a half, maybe an eight. Uh, and if we're ever alone together, I might try and choke you and slap you. Yeah, but I've done the work, been in therapy. Update 15, this woman went on a single date with him 10 years ago. He yelled at her in a public restaurant. This guy rules after she called him out on him manipulating his ex-girlfriend. Shared anonymously with permission. My partner was uh, following your story about Ryan Andrews, and as soon as he played the voice memo for me, I knew exactly who it was. Went on a date with him about 10 years ago and reading everyone else's responses, I'm so glad I never gave him my number, address, or socials. He talked at me the entire date. It was just like li listening to the voice memos and then casually slipped in how he used to manipulate his ex-girlfriend and I called him on it. He did not enjoy that and proceeded to yell at me in the restaurant. I should have left, but I was honestly too scared. Then he tried to kiss me goodbye. Never talked to him again until maybe two years later. He sees me on a dating app and sends me a bunch of voice memos not knowing I was the same person. I guess he has done this to every woman in the GTA at this point. <laughs> Stay safe out there. I love the idea of a guy. <laughs> Dating apps are very interesting in that you're just, you're just subjecting yourself to an evening potentially with a complete fucking weirdo. This guy successfully sort of hid his psycho personality behind this veneer of, you know, shrug Jimmy Halpert and these bullshit little fake self-deprecating canned lines um and pretending to like sh you know shitty things that chicks are into like fucking uh therapy and the gilmore girls um and and then it comes out that he's a fucking uh he's uh you know really beginning to sound like more than just a, an aloof cre weirdo uh a, a potentially dangerous sociopath Update number 16. Looks like we have some more voice memos. Goody. Ryan messaged this woman a year before she saw it and spent the entire year reacting to her stories on Instagram. April 2019. There were so many moments in these recordings that were identical or made me die inside. I'll let you hear for your... So he's again approaching, I guess, with the same game. Where is he? Come on. Uh, this is... Uh, she's scrolling through the chat. It's too small to see. Can I open it up a little bit? Oh, here we go. Nice. Oh, my God. He dropped some dog shit corny lines. Okay. So, oh, my God. He opens with just, okay, so, and then hashtag caps lock. You had me at UFC and hate cats. The rest is a bonus. Also, I feel like a total fuck boy for sliding into your DMs. 
but I know I'm not. It was just such a badass write-up, and we're kind of neighbors, so I had to. I regret nothing. Also, Brendan Schaub, T-Fat K, or just Rogan's? A day goes by without her... Oh, no, not a day. Months. Months go by without her responding, and he writes, Meep, meep. Then a few weeks later, he writes... You follow John Jones on Insta? Bless your soul, madam. No response. Then a few weeks after that, he com- he keeps keeps messaging her. Just he sends her a picture of some book. It's too, too small. I can't, uh, can't see. But says tears. Okay, give me your brief synops- synopsis. Super curious. Responds to one of her. She has not responded. This has been going on here for what looks to be almost a year there's i think a, a dog is being murdered outside i don't know if that's slipping in uh they 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 breed them for fighting next door um uh, yeah you're losing fight harder um wow big on using the applause emoji and just the crying emoji this guy's like 37 by the way and then oh my god he writes this is i'm trying to see what month this is so this is he's been at it for almost a year here it started in uh in in the summer and now he's back to, he's, he's around to the following april Comments under one of her pictures. Oh my God, you're like the female Dos Equis man. Love love it, dudette. And MMA knowledge. And then he has two of the starry eye, heart eye emojis. She finally responds, okay, whoa. And he responds, ha. Bit much, right? Agreed. Promise I'm not a serial killer. If you give me a minute, I'll try to explain. And in glorious fashion, I might add. Because he get it, he loves he loves the the shrug. He loves to write the shrug. Fair, give me like two sex. I mean, maybe a tad more, but two would help. It'll be funny, I promise. And again, no serial killing. That's a guarantee, Lore. Hey, dudette. Sorry about that. Had a crazy busy weekend with work and forgot. Ha. Huh. Okay, so do we get do we get to hear these? No? What the fuck? Tell me we get to hear this. Oh yeah, we do. Nice. Acknowledge that this is fucking weird, and I apologize for that. If you give me a minute, I will explain, and I'm like 98% sure you will end up laughing and totally get it and appreciate it. Uh, also, you know, not a serial killer, and i um, not trying to sell you anything yet. I'll- the same fucking routine every time. And they're not even good. I mean, again, I, I understand what he's doing. This is, he is using sort of, like that person said in that comment from the beginning, we've been doing this now for like an hour and a half. He is using internet speak, colloquialisms that, uh, you know, sort of semi-urban white women are very comfortable with. So he's trying to play to a specific audience. Although it is one of my end goals to get you to buy a bunch of Tupperware, but that's that's like a tomorrow conversation. Moving on, uh, I do apologize again because uh, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> you scroll up and there's... Okay, so long story short, apparently last summer in August, uh, actually, to be honest with you, I remember it pretty clearly. I saw you on Bumble and 
I guess you listed your Instagram or something or it was attached. I don't fucking know, man. But uh, there was two things that made me go, holy shit, the world would be a way better place if this lady and I were friends. I mean, it's the exact same fucking thing. It'd be a great place if we were friends. Because Jim and Pam were friends first, right? Because we're just friends. Just someone who's your best friend. Like This is incredible. There's a guy, uh, this is how he spends his free time. Is this what you fucking people do in Canada? And I remember both of them. Well, actually, two and a half things. But one, are, are you're like a big UFC person. I don't know if it's that you do BJJ or, or if it's judo. Uh, I've seen a lot. Of- he's trying. Oh, he's kind of inquisitive. He wants to know about her. A post from you seems like you're either an instructor or you train regularly. But just I don't have any friends. I can chat about you. Could have cut it off right there, couldn't we? UFC with and I'm balls deep in MMA man like I'm not someone who trains or anything but I, I listen to Brendan Schaub's fighter and the kid podcast I've listened to Rogan's for years by the way I mean <laughs> you know admitting you're a big fan of Brendan Schaub I don't know how far that's gonna get anybody <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, ah, he's trying he's trying uh Oh, poor guy. Um, I'm balls deep in MMA. I mean, I don't train or anything like that. I'm balls deep. He's balls deep in it, though. He listens to Joe Rogan and Fighter and the Kid. I listen to Rogan and Fighter and the Kid. I don't have a fucking thing about UFC. I'm not balls deep into it. Um, even if I didn't watch any events, I still know so much of what's going on just by virtue of the podcast I listen to. So it would be lovely to have someone I could chat about that shit with. Um and also, you fucking said you hate cats. I don't think you said you don't like cats. I think you said you hate them or you dislike them or something stronger than just I dogs are better. Like, and that tells me so much about you as a person. Don't fucking get me started on cats, dude. Or The cat thing, by the way, is it's because it's dogs. Dogs sort of rule social media. So by emphasize, you got to emphasize that you're a dog person. That's what these. If you see a single guy who has a dog, he's just doing. It's not for the companionship. He's just trying to get fucking pussy out of it. For cat people, cat ladies are a thing. I mean, there's exceptions to the rule, but oh god, oh god, I have a lot of experience with that and many many thoughts on it. Remind me sometime. I will let you know. I think like every online dating profile I've ever had, whether it's Tinder, Bumble, Plenty of Fish, has had some variation of like dogs greater than cat. By the way, by the way, I really appreciate everyone who has stuck with me through this entire thing because I understand how just nauseating and hateable this individual is. And you're probably like, why would you commit this much time to this? Because I am fascinated by this. This thread started on June 18th and she was posting updates for uh, like three or four days uh, afterwards of these things just rolling in and I followed the saga from start to finish. And I wanted to present it to you folks here tonight. That's, or I just say, hopefully you're a dog person. I would love to do what you do and be like, Oh, fucking cat suck. And if you have them, please don't message me or match with me, but it's a bit aggro and uh, guys have to be a little bit different in this dating world. So those are the two reasons. Here's the half. Uh, Well, it accounts for much more than a half, but you know, and a half but you know i don't want to seem like a total fuck boy here uh you know, yeah you're had to go to a fresh tweet because he's left her by the way you can only you can get uh, about two minutes 20 seconds worth of audio into one of these and he is leaving complete strangers like four to six minutes worth of him speaking you're good looking um big fan of your face a couple other parts i mean it's it's really cool that you look like a disney princess but you just seem really cool Called her a disney i mean princess i don't want to hide the fact that i think you're cute but uh fuck dude if you want to just see about being friends and go from there i am fine with that like i wish i could say that the world was full of cute blonde girls that live near me and are into ufc and hate cats and that i just am reading off a notebook and i do this all the time actually it sounds very much like he's reading off of a notebook and like he does this all the time. I don't. I'm not. I'm... I think you do. I'm just being honest with you. Um, I don't do cocaine. I just talk and think very quickly. And when I've had coffee or I'm excited about something, it gets worse. That's what's going on. Right? You know what? If you were doing cocaine, this behavior might be excusable. Because, look, I, I will tell you, I have done a a lot of fucking stimulants 
in my day. Not anymore. They're putting fentanyl and all that shit. If you're out there, don't touch fucking street Adderall. Don't don't buy cocaine. Don't touch any of that shit because there's fentanyl in everything. You're going to die. But as someone who did want to do a lot of cocaine, uh, I can tell you, well, not a lot of cocaine. A lot of cocaine is a different story. I did, uh, you know, of you know, a a party boy degree of cocaine, which for for most people is uh, is a lot. But I was weighing, you know, about two twenty. I was in powerlifter shape at the time. I was fucking going between two twenty, two thirty, benching close to fucking four hundred pounds. Just an absolute brute. Uh, and I also enjoyed my cocaine quite a bit. Uh, um, coke, you will. You will do and say some crazy fucking shit on Coke and Adderall, for sure. Um, but I don't even know if I ever did anything like this. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure I probably, I, I mean, I, I know I definitely got gotten coked up and said some lewd things to women before. That that goes without say. Uh, but nothing as psychotic as this, because one is just you're coked up at night at like a club and you're trying to, you know, trying to get fucking blown and whatever. And you're just fucking, you know, that's you and... That's you and the other cocaine people just being wild with each other. That's one thing. This is this is stalking that takes place over a series of months and years and is pervasive and persistent. Uh, you feel horrible about yourself after you've been doing cocaine. <laughs> you come down. That's why people do more cocaine. You want to get back. You want to get back to being the megalomaniac who every every thought is a great idea right now in case you're wondering um speaking of cocaine please remind me to tell you the funny story about how i had my avengers endgame experience almost completely ruined yesterday by the person sitting next to me that did coke three times during the movie and smelled bad i'm not making that shit frankly if i had to sit next to someone in a movie theater and i had to choose between a, a guy fucking blasting lines and and this asshole i'll sit next to the cocaine guy all day, every day. Because here's the thing about people with cocaine. People who are doing cocaine want other people to do cocaine with them. For whatever reason, people don't like to do coke by themselves. They like having a partner to do cocaine with. Uh, and that guy would probably share his cocaine if you if you asked. If you ask someone who has coke if you can get in on it, usually, unless it's the very end of their supply, they will let you. Uh, again, I would not suggest doing cocaine at this time because it is very, very unsafe due to fentanyl. Shut up. I should fucking put this in a podcast or a YouTube video and tell the story. I think I'd get money out of it. it, it I'm, I'm trying to laugh about it, but I'm a huge Marvel fan, and I, I kind of just wanted to end this person's life, and I'm not even a very violent person unless there's popcorn involved. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, and he's making those cute jokes. He's not violent unless there's popcorn involved. Like almost – that almost reads like the kind of thing, uh, you know, like those cheeky signs, like, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's, you know, it's fucking like, you know, those or those wine mom things like, you know, like I, you know, I'm supposed to be, I, you know, I'm supposed to be parenting, but first wine or, you know, whatever the fuck like that's that's what that is. That's what that humor. That's what I'll get violent over. Dude, uh, I realize this was a lot. I would apologize, but should say he should say I don't get violent over anything except for except for little league baseball. One time at a at my nephew's game, the umpire made a bad call, and I bashed his head in with an aluminum bat in the parking lot. I broke a, a kneecap for good measure. But um, aside from seeming cool as fuck and having a dog, and I live near Port Credit, by the way. Um, there seems to be, even just like looking through your your like captions it kind of confirms that you're a goofball like me and have a solid sense of humor yeah, that is rare goofball. and awesome and uh i guess i just added you on instagram and then rather than trying to explain myself decided i would react to a bunch of your shit i don't know it's a pretty bad plan but um you were yeah. probably curious so a little bit more about me uh six one full-time musician uh live just about here ontario and qw rent a place by myself it is too big for me not that i'm not you know asking you to move in or anything uh, one of us would end up pregnant, but um, yeah, I mean, I get it because he'd be fucking her so much, right? But one of them, because it's kind of goofy, right? Because he wants to be non-threatening, so it's like, oh, you get pregnant too, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna strap on this guy.
I play guitar and sing about 20, 25 times a month. Uh, it's pretty fun. Make my own hours. Never have to wake up before 11. Can make about four or five grand a month having fun. People clap and say thank you. A lot of them are retirement home gigs. Yes, that is adorable. Yes, I'm good at it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, he must be. I would love. I would. You know how those fucking idiots paid $250,000 to go down and look at the Titanic? I wish there was some sort of thing where you could get into a vessel and watch guys like this interact with the world. Like, you know, what their friend groups are like, what they're like at work, what they're like in private moments when they're when they're doing all of this. I am so fascinated by the psychology of a douchebag. Like, I would love to almost like fantastic voyage into this fucking guy's brain um i smell really good like I'm, I'm not just saying like i don't <laughs> smell bad for ontario and qw rent a place by myself it is too big for me not that i'm not you know asking you to move in or anything all right we uh, heard one this one already that was number 16 so <laughs> we're about this is i don't know if i've ever done a show over two hours there's an update 17 <laughs> This woman was originally approached by Ryan Andrews the same way I was, but had the misfortune of running into him at the park where she called him on using the word retard. He angry, angrily told her she was a woke feminist and ranted about the patriarchy. Also, ducks. Um, so oh, this woman works with people with ASD and he kept casually using the word retard. Um when I called him on it, he launched into an aggressive rant about how I'm a woke feminist and the patriarchy isn't real. Well, he's right about that. I felt so uncomfortable in a public park, I asked him to leave. He kept talking at me until I packed up my journal and left. I'm not surprised this is a pattern for him, but very alarming. I also received several voice notes with almost identical messaging to your post, but have since deleted. <laughs> I mean, he just doesn't. This guy has boundless energy is what I appreciate about him. Up to, please tell me number 18 is the last update. I literally don't have the energy to go through any more of these. Yes, it is. This one comes from a woman who actually met with Ryan Andrews in fall of 2022. He tried to defend Andrew Tate. Okay, so he's not all bad. Uh, when she broke things off, he continued to call her and text her for months, trying to regain access to her. Um <laughs> Here's we'll we'll end on her slew of messages. These I mean every chick is writing a fucking book about this guy. Hey Kelsey, I hate to even be sending this message. I saw the uh Nar City article about Ryan Conaput. I want to vomit. I went on a few dates with him in fall 2022. He was borderline creepy with me, but not nearly to the extent with you uh documented. Um she's so embarrassed she doesn't even want to admit that she uh, met up with him. Uh, I'm sure the police are already aware of him based on what I've read. Um, when things ended between us, he continued to contact me for months, both calling and texting, trying to worm his way back in. I didn't reply and finally told him to back off about a month ago and blocked his number. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely fucking incredible. Um, uh, at nighttime conqueror, I did, uh, if you go to my Twitter, if you go to, uh, at Mike Montone, I did retweet the thread. So if you want to check all of these out, um, not Sam Miguel, good of you to, uh, to be joining us. Um, yeah, we've just been, uh, going over the viral Twitter dating thread of, you know, Whatever, whatever the fuck you want to call this. Um, yeah, this is just incredible. It was what a fucking journey that was. I and experiencing it again, I wanted to bring it to you guys. I'll clear it off the uh, the screen here. I, I had to go over it with. Um, with with you guys because i wanted to take you on the journey with me 
um, that I went on again over a series of days. Um, I was down the shore with, uh, with, with my sister and my, my niece and, uh, my brother-in-law, we were like fucking eating, eating Sunday dinner. We were having, uh, tacos. Uh, 